EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Western Pennsylvania and Heinz Field in the Steel City of Pittsburgh. They love the black and gold here in the Steel City. And a few moments ago, their Steelers emerged from the Heinz Field Tunnel. They're set. We're set as the Steelers are ready to do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. right out of the gate we're gonna get a delay he didn't seem in a rush I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there right no up tempo at all clock just ran out I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was Play action now. Jackson. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. From the gun, Jackson. Buying time to his left. And this is going to be hauled in by the tight end, Andrews. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big play that time through the air. 38 yards. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. Eluding the pressure right. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right? Again, Jackson. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And the Ravens are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. First and goal. A chance for an early statement here on the road. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Dobbins. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. J.K. Dobbins. Touchdown number 15 of the year. And the Ravens take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This one taken just inside the 10. And not a great return here. He'll make it back only to the 10-yard line. 
For most people, the excitement of the kickoff return is to see a long one that goes back in the opposite direction. But for the guys covering it, it's being able to stop them deep in their own territory. How about that incredible form tackle right there? Shoulder in the ball carrier, and down he goes. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. A first carry for Najee Harris. And strong running there gets this up over the 15-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Now this defense for the Ravens, they were terrific last week in the win over Denver. It was a little bit of lightning talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. Harris going to get it again on second down. And they got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Well, that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through. It has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. And defensively, Baltimore's in a dime look here on third. He'll drop to throw. Trying to get it to Ebron, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Brandon Stevens. And this one will be brought back to the 22. And this Charles, definitely not what they were wanting to see. Remember, he threw three interceptions in the loss last week, and now he gives the ball away again here in the very first quarter. And you have to think that this was drilled into him all week, too, by his teammates, by his coaching staff. They've told him all week long, we've got to protect the football. They probably crossed that fine line with giving him the right advice. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Another try after the first down sack. Jackson, that's taken in by DuVernay. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Forced out to his left. And Jackson going to have the first down as he will get to the ground to avoid the contact. Now Jackson on first down. Flushed out right. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Jackson now. And he comes back with one complete. And the Ravens are going to have a first and goal. They nearly had the touchdown, but he's going to be marked out of bounds just shy of the pylon. They'll try to run with Dobbins. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. J.K. Dobbins with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Ravens lead this now 13-0 here in the opening quarter of the ball game. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now 14-0. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. 
Returning it, Johnson. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. You know, in our research packet this week, prepping for the game, so many articles from the local beat writer about the offensive struggles of this team and what will they do this offseason? What do you think they'll do? Well, number one, they'll turn to their self-scouting report. And every team that's any good does this. They have outside groups. You check out their team, scout them, and tell you who can play, who can't play, and reasons why. Some of it may just be health. They have to get some guys healthy and back out on the field. But overall, evaluate this squad. Trying to get it to Ebron, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Stevens. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. Partner, what we just saw, that's a great example of a team that was really amped up. They've been playing so well, yet they didn't get overexcited and have a bust on defense and gave up a big play. Instead, they created their own big play with a pick six. This one may be over. Yeah, it's just the first half, but that lead is swelled to the point where you're wondering if it is over already. 21-0, our score after one. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. And a short kick taking it about the 16. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And they gave up the pick six, and now they'll be looking to right the ship here. Now, as a quarterback, are you a little more cautious this go around? You should be, just because after what you gave up. But you can't be so cautious as to just really take things in, and now you're not going to play loose enough to give your team a chance to score. But you still have to be careful, because those defensive guys, I know the reputation defense guys can't catch. All evidence to the contrary on that last possession, though. <laughs> and he'll get this down only to about the 46. It was Justin Houston who got him down. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Steps away to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Back to throw here. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And this is going to be brought back for a Baltimore touchdown. This first half has been a nightmare for that offense. Defense just dominating them. And when you're picking up the ball, picking up their mistakes, and taking it the other way and putting it in the end zone, that's a defense's dream. They're having that type of a game. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for this offensive unit. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And a short kick taking it about the 16. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And they weren't on the sidelines for long, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad you and I weren't down there. We could hear the coaches from all the way up here. They were adamant you've got to hold on to the football or else we have no hope. Yeah, it's easy for me to laugh sitting up here, but you're exactly right. If we were down there, that message would have been received a whole different way because turnovers, they've been a big problem for them. Got to take care of the football. Got to hold on to it. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now back to throw. Down. The Ravens able to get to him. That winds up pushing him back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And for the 
third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. Boy, so another interception, CD, and it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. After the interception, here's Jackson. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Jackson from the shotgun. He's going deep for Brown. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. Dancing to his left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. And a tough ask here. They're going to go for it on fourth down and nine. To throw is Jackson. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with a football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. The Ravens go for it, but come up empty. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. Now, these two division rivals, a couple of late games on the schedule this year. Their first meeting, you might remember, was back in week 10, and it was the visitors getting the win there, so they'll be looking for the sweep back here at home. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off at the 33. And now off to the races, down the right side. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. Tucker now to add the point after. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Now here's Johnson. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, hey, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one, that didn't bother you too much last time? No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Boy, that one was well read defensively, and this is all about diagnosis as a safety and being decisive because he saw it setting up in front of him, able to knife through there and make the play. Ball had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. 
He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And he'll go ahead and field this at the five. 62 yards on the punt that time. Wow. And the Ravens will get it. First and 10 from deep in their own territory. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive as they'll take over with just under a minute left to play until the break. The drive will commence with a run by J.K. Dobbins. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Now it's Jackson. Flush to his right. Open man is Duvernay. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. I can't believe they even let you play. Mike's, Mike's 40, Mike's 40. Ryan, check, crunch, crunch. Middle, middle. Slam, slam. Here's Jackson to throw. Looking left side, Andrews with it complete. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Now it's Jackson. Being chased out left. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. As a stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. Jackson looking to throw on third. And this will be caught at the 30. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Let's just call it what it is. This has been a flat-out struggle for this defense all game long. They've really had a hard time slowing them down. And while I'm not big on speeches and guys jumping up and down, they might need their team leader on defense to get in their face right now and light a fire under these guys. They've got to start playing better assignment football and start getting guys on the ground. On first and 10, it's Jackson. And he's going to go down. They get to it back at the 40. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Throwing on second and long. Jackson. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Steelers going to get the football first here, trailing on the scoreboard as we are back underway on EA Sports. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it's just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 40. Looking to throw. He's going to look deep down the field. And now here is another interception. Picked off by the Pro Bowler, Marcus Peters. But that one is going to sting. First play of the third quarter and a turnover. And you have to know that at halftime, they spent a lot of time going through their checklist of what they wanted to accomplish to start this third quarter. Turning it over like this was not on that list. Not at all. You, and you come out of the locker room trailing, so that first drive to establish momentum is very key. Crucial. They go play action with Jackson. Throw left side complete. That's Andrews. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. So first and 10. And if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Hey, 
Off the play fake to Dobbins. Here's Jackson. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Play fake. Here's Jackson. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Mark Andrews with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Ravens turn that interception into a touchdown. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and it is 42 to nothing. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Out of the end zone comes Johnson. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And last time, one play interception, so this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> and my goodness, another interception. Picked off by Josh Jones. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. The CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on-the-job training, so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. Escaping the pressure right. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. And Brandon, this is the time of the game when Jackson could really take over. He's got the defense's legs a little bit tired. He's got them on the run. Yeah, this defense looks gassed, and you're exactly right. Second half with the lead. This is when Lamar Jackson seems to thrive. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. Here's Jackson. Throw right side here, taken in by Bateman. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. That time, the completion goes for four yards, and we're set up with a third and goal. Jackson. That is caught. It's Bateman for a Raven touchdown. Rashad Bateman, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Ravens have used the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Tucker with the extra point, and that will extend this big lead. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Johnson now returning. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is... And now here is another interception. Picked up by Josh Jones. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. The number seven, usually lucky here, not for him. Seven picks he's thrown in this game. That's only happened six times since 1960. And I know that the most recent time it happened, the guy who threw him, he'd won a Heisman Trophy in college, so sometimes you just have a lousy game. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad career, but when you talk about one game, seven, you're right, not lucky at all. Yeah, Ty Detmer, the last to do it in 2001 to throw seven picks. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at 
the Steelers' 33-yard line. Throwing again on second down. Jackson eluding the pressure right. This is caught. It's Brown. And in for the Ravens' touchdown. Hollywood, Marquise Brown with a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. And the Ravens get another third-quarter touchdown to add on to that lead. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and the lead will swell by one more. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. From the 10. Oh, a good-looking return set up here. And yeah, they'll have good field position here as he's out of bounds up at about the 34-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Harris has it over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Well, maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense, they have not looked particularly good all game long, but a nice throw there for a good game and a first down. Second and 11. On play action, they'll throw. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They and my goodness, another interception. Picked off at the 46. Pass the 20. And a terrific return there. They're finally able to corral him down near the 11-yard line. With that interception, he just set a record that nobody ever wants to set, and that's the most picks ever in an NFL game. Eight. The eight. The eight. Eight. The, eight. The last time we saw seven, 2001, right? Yeah. It's Ty, Ty Detmer. Detmer. He's with the Lions at that time. To get to eight. Are we sure he knows what color jerseys his team's wearing in this one? He's, I don't know. It has not been good. On second and 11 now, Jackson buying time to his left. The quick feet by Jackson. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. DC, 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 DC. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Historically, this is such a tough, loud venue, but you can hear a pin drop right now. A lot of fans long gone, not used to seeing a lopsided score like this. That is caught. It's Bateman for a Raven touchdown. Rashad Bateman, his second touchdown of the game, giving him 12 on the season. And the Ravens add on to their lead, and they are also closing in on a fifth straight victory. Tucker with the extra point, and that will extend this big lead. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. 
This fielded right at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And you see a lot of frustrated faces as they are inching closer to a fourth straight loss. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. And while he did a good job of sliding around in the pocket, there was nowhere to go with the football, so he had to take off and try and run. He just got back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. Back to throw now on second and 10. Man open, that's Marquez Valdez Scantling. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A big play that time on the catch and run. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Second and 14. Flushed out right. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. Holding on to the football becoming a little bit of an issue. He had two fumbles last week, remember? I played for a guy that used to talk all the time about creating turbulence in the pocket, making the quarterback jumpy, make him antsy, keep getting after him a little bit, and make sure he thinks about holding on to the ball because you're going after him. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Now Jackson on second down. He's going to go for a big play downfield, and that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there trying to take a shot, but it's third down. The Ravens on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five at this point. This is third and 11. Now Jackson. Forced out to his left. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. Play action. It's Jackson. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. There's a beautiful throw there, and he's been sensational the entire game, moving it around, spreading it, hitting the right guys. And look, under normal situations, partner, I would expect him to come out of the game now. They've got it in hand. But you and I have been around this league a long time, and every time we ask head coaches about it, hey, why don't you take your quarterback out when the game's in hand? They just kind of give us that look like that's what he's paid to do. So it's a very unusual situation. I'd want him out. They tend to leave him in. Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson right back to Duvernay. That's complete. And the Ravens are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. Jackson will throw again. Flush to his right. 
toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They're still throwing the football here, and obviously the incompletion stops the clock. That's a bad thing. Feels to me like they're just keeping them honest on defense because you know they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and try and stop any type of a running play. Short little passes may work in exchange of running plays, keep the clock moving, keep them moving. Yeah, I guess you're right. If they can get some first downs, just as good as running the football. And it's caught. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. Third and goal, Jackson. And this will be caught. And the carnage continues. It's another touchdown. As that lead just swells and swells. Look, this has been dominance in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. So don't we have to give a lot of credit, not just to what we've seen today, but the preparation in advance, coaching staff, commitment by the players to the game plan, and being ready to go in this one? You're exactly right. Clean sweep. And boy, they're going to celebrate this one after it's over. And on the other side, this is the game film you just flush and never go back and review. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Well, I think that the folks here had hoped that maybe this home atmosphere would carry their guys to a surprise victory, but it does not appear that that's going to be the case. There's too much to handle on the other side in this one. 77 yards rushing for him now to this point. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. We've seen that the deep ball's been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Adafe Owe in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. One final shot, they'll look to throw. And he'll take this for a short gain on what will prove to be the final 